Good day. My name is Dave Glover. Today I'd like to talk to you about creating parsers when a message ID does not exist within the logs themselves. Let's take a look at a sample log message. In the following log file, let's just call the application AppX, the only thing I receive is a date time, a host name, the name of the application, the user, source address, and a file name. Now the application may change, so I really don't want to use that as a message ID. But how would I build a parser for this? If you've looked at my previous videos, we've always pulled a message ID, or an action, or an indicator, out of the actual log message itself. In this case, that really doesn't seem possible. So how do we deal with this? Well, let's start off by creating a new parser. So we'll call it AppX. This will be an application server. Device location, I'll put this into my parser directory, and click Create. From here, normal procedure, we drag the log file down to the bottom. Just to recap the pieces that are here, headers and message definitions go on the top, log files at the bottom. Red means we do not have a header defined. Orange would be if a header was defined but a message not, and then green is completely defined. Both pieces are in play. So as usual, we start here and we click on Create Header. In previous videos, I've always selected what I want to use as a message ID here and then click Create Header. In this case, we can't do that, it doesn't exist. So I will click Create Header. What's different here is I will click on Concatenation. This is where I want to define the message ID that I would like to synthesize. Again, this does not come out of the log messages themselves. In my case, for simplicity, I can call it AppX. So AppX will become my message ID. From here, I start defining the rest of the header. So this is all the same as before. So we'll do an H month, H day, H time. From here, I'll select host name. Now we have the meat of the log message that we want to parse out of. However, we always still need fixed text within the headers so that our parser doesn't misparse other messages. So let's continue on. We will go ahead and select a variable here. It doesn't matter, it's purely just a placeholder. So we can call this uh, happ user h user source address, H-S-A-D-D-R. From here is where I will define the payload. So I can go ahead and click here after the comma, set as payload. From here, I will now do a payload rewind back to the host name. So what have I actually done? I've told the system to use a message ID of AppX. The header looks like month, day, time, host name, anchor text or fixed text of application equals, comma, user equals, comma, source address equals, and then start the payload after the last comma, but rewind it back to host name. So let's slow that down and, and talk about what we did. We told the system we want to manufacture a message ID. We then told it what the header was. From there, we can now click create message. Because I chose the payload rewind of H host name, it means that the payload starts here. So when I click Create Message, we're going to start right here at the hostname. And then this becomes parsing just as usual. We'll do a hostname. AppX will parse into application. User. Pretty simple here. Source address. And last but not least, we have our file name. And then I could choose something very simple as object access. Object here. Now we see that the entire message or the entire log message set have parsed out. From here, we'll go ahead and click Save. And then I could go ahead and do the exports and deploy parsers. Again, my name is Dave Glover. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you.